Hey y'all, it's your girl, Celestine's Camera Roll. And if you are new to my family, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're watching and you're not yet subscribed yet. And I want you to do me a favor, go to that little bell and click all so you're notified every time I do an upload. Now some of you guys are here for my little um, bundle of joy that just came in December and I had a new baby boy and I'm just so overjoyed. Um, I had a little situation that I'm fighting through and you guys are watching me fight through that and have became family for me and my bundle of joy and of course my daughter as well. And so, but I also have a segment where some of you um, may be oldies from when I had my channel the first time and if you're not and you're new here, this segment is called story time saturdays so go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and i'm going to get into the story time and this story is about how god spoke to me through letting me know that he forbidden the doctor's hands um i have four children four children and one of them i attempted to terminate during a pregnancy because I had already had two kids already and I just wasn't ready for another responsibility but God said uh-uh yes you are you are going to do this so um God forbid it his hands I went to church and grabbed a message from him and we about to get into this story okay so I can't give you like I, I, I can tell you like my age I was about 22 years old and I was living in a three bedroom, one and a half bath, up and downstairs. It was really nice. And I just, I didn't, you know, I was being reckless, y'all. And I was messing around with someone, laid on top of me and told me, you know, if you have this child, if you end up pregnant. And this was like, I should have just known. This was like before I moved into that three bedroom, one and a half bath. I was living um, in another area, but in the same city. And that is where I actually met him. And so I met him there. And he laid on top of me and he said to me, if you get pregnant, you're going to have a boardie. If you don't know what a boardie is, think about it okay and we talking about pregnancy termination so you know what the key word is so I was like wow damn but I was so young I didn't think about it and I still proceeded to do what I probably shouldn't have do which was the grown folks do so I was about 22 I went on ahead he was 22 I was 22 he was 35 we did what we did back then and um, I lost contact with him for uh, quite a while, um, and like I say, it was some months, and I moved into this um, three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath up and downstairs, and one day I was walking, and I turned around to go backwards, and he put his car in reverse, when I... <laughs> Because I was trying to like act like I didn't see him. I was trying to pretend like I was trying to go the other way. <laughs> because I, I knew who it was. And it was him. And he was like, what's up with you? You going to, um, where you at now? I've been looking for you, man. They like, she moved, she moved. So I told him where I moved to. And um, one day he came over and he visited. And we did the grown folks do. And it happened. Now, when he told me I was going to have the boardy, it was the year prior. So, um, and then I proceeded to still do it without no prophylactic, like a dummy. But I was young and I wasn't thinking, and he should have knew better. You know what I'm saying? Grown man. So, um, I got pregnant, found out I was pregnant. I was like, oh, no. And it only lasted for like 30 seconds. I didn't think I was pregnant off of that. <laughs> at all I don't know what happened I don't know if he felt shame and he just jumped the hell up and just dipped like oh my god I, whatever you know how me and are so <laughs> he jumped up left and I never seen him again oh no I take that back I did see him again but he was coming out of another female's apartment in the same parking lot that I stayed in let's just say that and I went after him he got mad, hopped in his car, and he peeled off because he was angry. 
and then I was going to tell him that I was pregnant, but I was like, mm, don't worry about it. And then I remembered about how he told me if I got pregnant, I was going to have a boardy. So months went by, I never seen him again. And I knew even if I did see him again, I was going to do it. So there's this place called Planned Parenthood. Went to Planned Parenthood, scheduled it over the phone and everything, and went in to go get the boardy. They get when they when you do this, they give you an ultrasound and they want to see how far you are because of course they want to know if they're breaking bones or just suctioning flesh. So, um, to know what procedure they need to go through with. So we do that and I'm not gonna lie, I was about three and a half, four months pregnant, I wanna say. And the night before I was drinking because I knew I was gonna go through with the boarding. And so it didn't matter, you know? But I guess God had other plans, you know? So I get to this place the next day and I'm asking people where they take me to go do it. And they're like, no, I don't believe in that. I'm not taking you to do that. If you were laying up, you should have did this. If you were laying up, you should have did that. Well, just cause you're laying with a whole bunch of dudes and having all, every baby that you lay with, I don't want to do that. Not judging, I'm just saying. I don't want to do that. I don't, you know. So, um, nobody wanted to help me but except for this one person. And she took me. And we drove all the way from Akron to Cleveland because there wasn't a clinic for that in Akron. And so, when I got to Cleveland, it was, it was on Shaker or something like that. I can't remember. But we got there and it kind of made me nervous but it wasn't going to stop me because I was set in stone. When I'm concrete about something, I'm concrete about something. When I want to do something, I want to do something. And ain't no change in my mind. So they all outside the, the, the clinic. No boardy, don't board the baby. Don't board the baby. Don't board the baby. And I'm like, wow. They're showing pictures of like boarded fetuses and stuff. And they're showing them. Trying to like just basically scare you away from doing it. So I go through it and I go in. I sit for about three hours. Um, within an hour and a half, I'll say, um, they ended up giving me like this little clear shortcut with like some meds in it to like numb me up after um, after that. Cause I had the first appointment, I had to do the, the ultrasound or whatever. And um, I sat there for another hour and a half. They called me back. This is where I get nervous, but I still want to go through with it. I lay on the table, and the doctor says, "Do you want to see? Do you want to see it after the procedure?" And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I wouldn't be doing this if I wanted to see it. No. So he's like, "Okay, what we're gonna do is this, 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 and this, and you're this far along, and this is how we're gonna do it." And I'm like, "Okay." And it's going to go right here. And if you want to see it, da, 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 da. And I'm like, I don't have no care for that. So he's sitting there and he goes to insert. He told me, I'm going to insert this in your lady part. And then you're going to go home. And this situation is going to happen. And you're going to come back the next day. And we're going to finish the process. Y'all, that was the only part that sounded scary to me. Because I'm like, you mean to tell me? You gonna do whatever you gotta do, and then I gotta go home and be all messed up. Am I gonna? I'm like sitting there, like, am I gonna be in pain? How's this gonna work? What is what? What? So he starts the process, kind of like the how gynecologist. If you at the gynecologist, and he tries to insert something in there in the lady part. He's fooling around for about five minutes. He stops. Then he's like scooting up grabbing the light trying to look and he tries to do it again can't get it so then he takes a break he's fiddling for quite a minute the second time and so he calls in another doctor and he's like you know am i tripping and um she tries she does two times two so then she's like nah you're not and he was like i'm trying to figure out if it's tilted or not and she's like, yeah, she's tilted. And so, um, 
the other doctor, the main doctor that was doing it, so she walked out, she was like, okay, I'm, he was like, I'm just gonna try again. Let me see if I can. So he's really trying to fiddle around, I guess. I didn't know how intense it was, but I guess it was very intense. So he says to me, um, your uterus is tilted, so I'm really trying to do this so we can do this correctly. And I'm like, okay. So he's fiddling around for another five minutes. He tries like two or three more times, and he's like, ma'am, I can't do this. He was like, your uterus is tilted, and I don't want to lose my license. And I was like, what do you mean? You've been doing this all day, and you've been doing this for perhaps years. He was like, um, I know, but maybe there's somebody that specializes in um, people who have the condition you have. You have a tilted uterus. And he was like, if I try to aim it and due to it being tilted, it aims and it goes somewhere else. It's not only going to um, perform what we're trying to do, it's also going to take you out. And I was like, you, you, you can't be serious. I'm like, can you please just try? Can you try? He's like, ma'am, I want my license. I don't want to lose my license. So then I'm mad. I'm upset. And y'all, I would not lie. I was even upset with God. God himself. I was upset with him. Because I'm like, because I couldn't figure out how everybody else is coming in here. Y'all been practicing this for years. And mine doesn't go through. So now I'm walking out of here with baby. That, and that wasn't the plan. So I'm like, man, this is crazy. I'm looking at everybody else, walking in and all walking out, happy with their decision. They cool with their little decision and they cool with whatever they set up to do. And they, you know, and I'm just sitting here like, man, this ain't it. And then I was drinking the night before because I knew this was just going to happen. So I, I didn't know how to call, who to call, where to call to go see who specialized in it. So I just was like, man, this is crazy. So I go home, I end up in church that week. I believe I ended up in Cleveland and I end up in church. When I tell you um, that day that I walked into that church, I think it was Second Baptist in East Cleveland. That day that I walked into that church, I went to like the little Bible study first. And I'm not a person that talks to people I don't know. I've grown a little bit and I've gotten a little older. People thought that I was mute because I barely talk. Literally. That's how much I, I didn't talk. So I was raising my hand in Bible study because the Bible study was about how we're all born and we're here for a reason. So I'm like, I just kind of want to give a testimony. And I was basically confessing my sins. I'm like, I just want to say that this... I think it was meant for me to be here at this Bible study today because I said yesterday I had a, a, a situation where I wanted to terminate my situation um, and it didn't go through and I was mad at God and here I am and this is what Bible study is about and it was about like how God knows every hair on your head, the number of hairs on your head, he knew what you were going to be and what you weren't going to be before you got here. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And that basically was what it was about. So I felt to like tell my testimony, tell my story and confess my sins. We get to the main part of the church, y'all, and I kid you not, the whole sermon was about how we were born for a reason. It tied in with the Bible study. I don't know if it was planned or somebody went up to him and talked to him about what I had going on. I don't know nothing, y'all. When I tell you, that's what made me sit back and think, God forbid that doctor's hands. He forbid that situation not to happen that day. Forbid it because he wanted what he wanted me to do, which was to keep. It wasn't me. So, like, like, I, and I'm sitting there like, dang, that was God. That wasn't a doctor. He knew how to do this. God didn't. God fixed his hands to where he wasn't able to do it. And I had a situation where I couldn't go through with it. So, I just thought about it and I said, I'm going to have to have faith. To go ahead and, and and birth this child and know that I'm going to be okay raising three kids. I was a single mother of two at the time, and so I'm like, I'm gonna be all right. I'm gonna go ahead and raise this child. 
and I'm gonna have faith about doing it. And her name is actually Faith. And those of y'all who are not new to my channel, you guys know who Faith is. So, that is how my child, um, how God let me know that she was meant to be here. And I hope you guys enjoy this story. I also want to say this. I am, I don't, I personally don't believe in abortions anymore today for myself, not for anybody else. Because ever since that happened, that's just became my belief. But I'm not against it either. Because I truly believe when things happen that you didn't ask to happen to you, then you know, you got to handle your situation. Just like with situations with people being, you know, by family members and people they don't know. And they necessarily might not want to, you know, have a child and they don't know what this child is going to be or what kind of issues the child is going to have because they're from someone that they don't even know. So, I, I'm, 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 I'm both sides. I'm team both sides. Pro and anti I don't I don't well really I'm not both sides I just don't I don't lean one side or the other because I get it you know and I don't judge others for doing it so that was my story time I hope you guys enjoyed it and remember when I do a story time it gets great